Hey guys, uh, here's a computer episode and a update kind of thing. Uh, so, been searching for different kinds of pistogrammas because my male cockatoidy has some kind of disease where the uh, fins stick out from the body. If anyone knows what that is, tell me please uh, and how to uh, fight it. But in case he dies, I found. I'm um, trying to find either more or another male cockatoidy, hopefully an orange flash. There are a few, like two different shades of orange for orange flash, and I'm not sure which one I want. Uh, but uh, another one I found is the Epistogramma Rahida number two, which is a variety or a variation of the regular, which is that one, is the regular one, and then the number two, which has been specially bred in line breeding and everything, is that, that one. Uh, can't really find where I can buy it, though. Are you going anywhere in the next hour? But, uh, if anyone knows where I can get this thing, I would love to hear it, because... I just really want to find these things. Alright, uh... So I'm just gonna show you what the... What's up to deal with the 29 gal? Uh... Wait one sec. Let me get some shoes on. Okay, so... As you can see... Doing a water change for third time in 24 hours. I did one in the last video, I think, and uh, I did one right before this, and now I'm doing another one because here he is. My male, like I said, is a weird disease or infection where the scales pop up. You can't really see it. It actually looks pretty creepy. It used to happen with my guppies sometimes. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, I think it's dropsy. I'm not totally sure. But uh, if you guys know, please tell me. just want to say that again. Because uh, I really want to figure out how to get rid of it. Because if he dies, and it's going to take forever to get a new a new male. Or just a pair of vehicles too. Uh... Corys are doing a f doing fine. They're really big, and I'm not gonna feed these guys for another two days or two or three days because I fed them. I couldn't or my little experiment thing with the uh, bottle. I was trying to figure out a way to make a kind of a geyser where the air pressure goes in. There's only one exit, which is uh, one exit, which is where the brine troop like. Okay, so let me just try and explain this. Better. Okay, so this is where the air would be pumping in, pumping down into there or just up there, and then you'd have another tube. Or I had another tube in here, uh, right there. So all uh, this crap right there is just uh, super glue. Uh, another tube would go in one of these holes, uh, go down into the water, the other side from the bubbler, and then. Uh, you could, there are two different ways. You could, one, have the air restricted to a certain pressure, so you so it goes pretty slow, so like one drop per minute or one drop per second, where that would be a few, a few, one or two brine shrimp every once, or like a second or two, so you get a continuous, uh, continuous food of live brine shrimp, uh, I tried that. I tried the, the one of the first way is just to put two holes in there, close them both up. One is air, one is going into your tank, and then you just see what happens. The other option is to have two holes or three holes. One is air, one is open, and one is regular tubing. And to get the geyser going, you just plug up one of the holes. Uh, I don't know what went wrong with it when I tried this out, but something went wrong and I got a spill. 
so I gotta clean that up. This is a pain. Uh, I decided to use the drawer that what used to be in here. I had two of those drawers when it wasn't a stand from a fish tank. So I just used the other drawer as like a little platform and do my stuff. Prime, still pretty much full. Flourish, I've been feeding it. Uh, uh, second flourish. Uh, I, oh, I want to show you guys another thing on the computer right after I show you something. I just want to get a shot of the uh, Good and Gobies. If you can see the bottom of that male right there, you can see how fat they are. They ate so much of the brine shrimp. I don't even know if they left any for the other ones. Right there, this man flaring. Yeah, she's angry. She actually feeds off of that sponge. It's pretty much worth for me and food sources. So yeah, I'm gonna do a couple more water changes to get the water pretty much pure. Go back to the computer. This uh something I wanna show you guys called the Alright, this is just the first one that I found. It's not the one that I want to buy from. But anyway, it's called the Aqua Breed 1000 or the Aqua Breed 200. So basically, it's uh, a newer kind of brine shrimp hatchery. The 200 is a brine shrimp hatchery, just a brine shrimp hatchery. Uh, the 1000, though, is a brine shrimp hatchery, and it is a. Uh, and it is a what cultivation unit which means you can grow out the brine shrimp to adulthood which usually takes two weeks so um so that's pretty much it i'm thinking about getting it the, on this side it's 29 or i mean the aqua breed 200 is 29 dollars aqua breed 1000 is 79 dollars but on a site called what Affordable Aquatic Supplies, it is only, what, $59.99, which is 60 bucks. so usually it's 100 bucks for the 1000 so that's a $30, $40 discount, so, you know, it's, it's a good, sorry about that, uh, sorry about the noise, my family. Shut up! All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, another thing is the Galaxy Rose Bor Rasbora Tet or uh, the Galaxy Rasbora or the Celestial Pearl Diana Danio. It's a Danio. So if you hear Gal, it's the same thing, but it's a Danio. It's been it used to be thought as a Rasbora, but it it was proved to be a Danio. Uh, it's pretty cool. It doesn't get bigger than an inch, you, uh, usually. Uh, on one site called Seriously Fish, they just they said it was only get what? The largest specimen ever found was 2.1 or 21 millimeters. Uh, I'm not so sure if that's still true because I've heard people say they get to an inch and a half, they get to an inch, so they probably stay around that size. So, uh,. Right here, there's five dollars each. Uh, a site that I closed earlier, they're what four or three dollars each, or five dollars each. I'm not sure. I don't really remember. Uh, another site that I want you guys to go see is Pistagramma.com. It's run by Ted Judy. Uh, who, if you know about, know the magazine is uh, tropicalfishhobbyist.com. Uh, I subscribe. It's a great, great, uh, great magazine for all you fish lovers out there. Uh, you can, anyway, back to pistagram.com. You can post questions, post pictures, uh, help people out. It's pretty much it. Another place that has the Epistogram of Cacatoides, Orange Flash, and Double Red, and Agassi Double Red, and, uh, what else? Bad, Dario Dario, so, I buy from these guys, but their shipping's kind of expensive, and they are in California, so it'd be really hard on the fish.
go all the way from the west coast to east coast. So that's another shot of the orange flash. This is what I'm trying to find. So I'm having a really hard time finding. Do you guys know where to find any a Pistagama Vajita number two, not number one, number two, or a Pistagama Cockatoides Orange Flash? Please tell me that too, because I'm working my butt off I'm trying to find this thing. Well, anyway, so that's it. See you next time.